Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. And this short video, uh, another video in our series of videos dealing with the geometric mean. And in particular, this video is going to concentrate on the geometric mean rate of return. Okay, uh, If you want sort of an overview of the differences, or let's say uh, the, an overview of, let's say, the differences between the arithmetic mean and the geometric mean and the geometric mean rate of return, uh, I'd recommend that you look at the video just before this one. Yeah? Okay, but with this video we're just getting straight into the calculation okay so let's have a look at the scenario uh, and thanks Stephen Walsh as well for these scenarios uh, so uh, Bob uh, is a private investor and he's purchased a particular portfolio of shares on the 1st of January 2015 and the price of the shares that he bought were uh, 600,000 euros and over the next couple of years, uh, the value of the portfolio uh, has changed. Uh, in the, on the 1st of January 2016, the value of the portfolio was €800,000. So you can see there was a change between 600000 the original cost, so it was an increase in the value of the portfolio. And then on the 1st of January 2017, well, with respect to the January before, there was a decrease uh, to 700,000. And I suppose what we're asking here is, can we calculate what the average, what the average annual rate of change in the value of the portfolio was, okay? Now, when we're looking at uh, rates of change, I suppose when we want to calculate averages with respect to rates of change, uh, because we can have positive and negative uh, rates of change and so on, we're better off using the geometric mean. Uh, the geometric Geometric mean is a more is a more uh, I suppose appropriate measure to to do when we're looking at returns and calculating the average of returns. Okay, so what should we do in this case? Maybe what we we'll do is we keep track of the year. Okay, so let's just create a table. Okay, let's just create a table. So we have a table here. So we have our year. It's January, let's say 2015. Okay, it's January 2016, and it's January 2017. Okay. And let's say we have the value of the portfolio, the price that the portfolio was purchased for. So let's say it's value. Okay. Uh, on 2015, it was 600,000 euros. Okay. Uh, in 2016, it increased to 800,000 euros. And in 2017, it decreased down to 700,000 euros. Okay. So what we'd like to actually calculate is what was the average, what was the average annual rate of change, okay, with respect to this portfolio. So the rate of change, we should calculate our returns, okay. So the return, the return, the change, okay, uh, is equal to. I like to think of it's today minus yesterday, okay, relative to yesterday, okay. All benchmarks of yesterday's value. So you can see today's price minus yesterday tells us the change, okay. That's the change. Uh, if it's positive, it means it's increased. If it's negative, it means a decrease. So that's the change. So let's just benchmark our change off yesterday's values, okay. So we're sort of normalizing here, okay. So our return, our return, okay. Well, uh, the return in 2015 would require that we have today's price, which is 600,000, but also we'd have a, a, a pr the price for the value of the, sh of the portfolio in 2014, which we don't have. So we cannot calculate the return for 2015. We can do the return for 2016, okay? So considering 2016, okay, 2016, let's call this R1, the return for 2016, uh, it's going to be equal to today, we're in 2016, so it's 800,000 euros, okay? Minus yesterday, which is six hundred thousand, okay. Relative to yesterday, which is six hundred thousand, okay. So the return or one uh, is equal to. So you can see what we actually have here is we have eight hundred minus six hundred gives us two hundred thousand divided by six hundred thousand is two divided by six, okay, which gives us a value of zero point three three. So there was a thirty three percent increase in. There was a thirty three percent increase in the value of the portfolio between uh, 2015 and 2016. Okay. What about 2017? Okay. So what about 2017? Uh, what is the return between 2016 and 2017? Okay. Well, let's call this R2. So R2 is equal to today's value which is 700,000 minus yesterday's value which is 